With the offset function in Excel, you can return a reference based on a starting reference, a number of rows and columns to move away from that reference, and the height in rows and the width in columns. So in this first example, I've got a list of sales and the months for those sales. And I've created an offset function so I can return the sales for a specific month. The starting reference is C1, and the number of rows to move is in F2, so we've got a 4 there, so that's a positive number. It should go down 4 rows. For columns, we don't want it to move, so there's a 0 there, and it will stay in column C. We want the size to be 1 row and 1 column. So going down 4 rows takes us to the 215 here. In the next cell over, I've got the same formula except that instead of a zero for the columns to move, I've got a one. So in this case it stays in that same row but goes over one column to return April. In this next example I've got a small table with regions and months and in this cell there's an offset function and it's wrapped with a sum function. So it's going to find a range and then the sum function gives the total for that range. So the starting range is this list of region names. We go down zero rows, so it will just stay in that same range. And the number of columns to move is in B10. So we're saying move three columns, so it'll be one, two, three. So it will now give us the sum for April. In the next example, I'm using offset with this formula to create a dynamic range and that range is named months list and it is used as the source for this data validation dropdown. So if right now it ends at July, if I remove July from the list here, automatically it's removed from that dynamic range so it doesn't show up in the dropdown list anymore. And to create the named range, I just go to the Formulas tab, and in the Name Manager, you can create a new name or edit an existing one, and there's the Months list name. And you can see the formula a bit larger here. So it's starting in cell C1. It's not moving. It's zero rows and zero columns. To get the number of rows for the size we just use count A to count everything in column C, and the width is one column. And in this final example, I've got months and quantities, and here I just want to say how many months I want to sum, and it's going to use the last three or four or whatever number I have here to get a total. So the last three months in this column of data will give us a total of 240. The offset function again is wrapped with sum. So we're starting in C2 and from there the number of rows to go down we're just counting everything in C and then adjusting based on the number of months that we've entered here. The rows for the height will be the number of months and one column. So if I change this to four, it's now going to give a total for the last four months. And if I added a new record at the bottom, instead of July, August, September, it's now going to total the last four months, including the new month that we just added.